can't take it. I've been working on this case all week. It's too hard. So is this wall. That's because the wall has a physical property of being hard. Wait a minute, detective. Say that again. The wall has a physical property of being hard. That can only mean one thing. That wall must be a solid. If that's a solid, then what doesn't have a definite shape? Kool-Aid. It must be a liquid. Liquid! By God, we have it. Nice job, detective. All right. So it makes those move. We have a spreading epidemic of textbook-related injuries. Apparently, 98% of all honors chemistry students have been afflicted. We have one reporter on the scene, though. Dr. Josh? Go. I am here in Miss Hubbard's chemistry class where the textbook epidemic originated. As you can see here, we have many students who have been afflicted, many of which have been working on a terms project and became stuck on the term, the law of definite proportions. What is the law of definite proportions? The law of definite proportions states that a compound has, always has a fixed ratio of elements. This water, for example, has a ratio of two hydrogen to one oxygen. Really? Well, I'm a novice at chemistry, but would that be an example of an extensive property? Yes, it is. The ratio does not change depending on the mass of the compound. For today's meal, we will be making chicken. Now, I have placed this rocky substance in this container called silicone, which is also an element because it can't be broken down any further. Now, I'm going to mix the silicone around a little bit and uh, see what the mixture turns out to, which it appears to be silicone, which could only mean that it is a heterogeneous ex uh, mixture. Now, I'm going to place these rocks in the oven for a minute and see what happens. Alright, so let's take this, uh, these rocks out of the oven right now. Mm, those look like some good chicken. And here's the finished product. The solution. So does that mean they, went, they underwent a chemical change? Yeah, they must have. I mean, rocks must have the chemical property of changing into chicken when heated. Heated at 375 degrees Fahrenheit? Cool. Sweet. Okay, so we have this crystalline substance. Uh, it's not an element, but rather a compound of several elements. Okay, so. When you add this substance to the liquid, it remains clear. So, I have produced a solution. Now, when I add the solution to another liquid, what happens? Absolutely nothing! However, when I re add this red liquid to the solution, let's see what happens. I have produced a homogeneous mixture because all its properties were mixed together. Now, we were told not never to eat in the lab, but I wouldn't be eating if I drank it. Oh. 88 miles an hour. Oh. That's right. But Doc, how did it just appear? It doesn't follow the law of conservation of mass. 
You're right. Its intensive properties make the universe just that much lighter. This could be bad. That could cause a disturbance in the space-time continuum. That might make a subspace tear. A tear? A tear what? What would that do, Doc? Captain, we can undergo a physical change very quickly out here. Patience. Diplomacy is a very exacting occupation. We will wait. Captain. Raising shoes. No. Captain. Fire! Excuse me. I'll be in the gym. So it makes those moves. Everybody knows it's those gas. No people were harmed in the making of the following scene, but some were slightly irritated. Solid liquid in the gases. And who's our man? It must be Krinchinsky. There Why did you make the flag move? Oh no, it has no. Where, where's the gas? Oh no, there's no definite receiver volume. You know how it all. I don't know what to do, Marty. I don't either. Hey, heterozygous. <laughs> what do you say? Heterogeneous. <laughs>